everybody, Adam at Flash Building here with another Flash CS3 and CS4 Action Script 3 tutorial. And in this lesson, we're going to be covering one of the needs of our forum members here. He wants to know, it's really simple to do, so I'm going to show you guys how to do it. And I already made the file, and this file, I'll explain the file in just a moment in detail. But you can also go and just download it, inspect it yourself, expand upon it, and use it for your... Um, dynamic applications where you're using PHP, MySQL, and Flash together. Okay, so the user writes, or David writes, Hi all, I really want to know how I can get a list of items from MySQL database. For example, I have 10 rows in my database that that it shows all of these 10 in my Flash application. Please help. And then I write, I can show that, sit tight. And then he writes, yeah, awesome. Actually, if it could be that there is a button or link on every line saying edit and delete, that would cover my entire issue. Well, I won't show you edit and delete, but I will show you, since I'm going to be using my database at Web Intersect here, I'll show you how I'll query my, my members out, uh, the first 10 that joined, and then I'll show you how to put a link on the member's name that would associate with that member's ID in the database that way you can manipulate it through script so that'll get you as far as you need to get you know you might have to do a little work on your own to tweak it to make it your very own application but I'll show you the logic okie dokie so what we have is this so I made this little application and it brings it into a, uh, a text area component and you can see when I click Adam you see it takes me to my profile in your application you would just make that link go to an edit page and then that ID for that row in the database would get edited through script okay let's go back and you can see let's click Dom see each one is different and it scrolls so no matter how many you have you get a nice scroll bar there let's click John he has ID of six so you can see I bring in the name, the ID, and, and the date they joined. Now I'm going to show you the PHP script that is the loop uh, feed that sends it into Flash. And then we'll look at the Flash side of things. Okay, so and I've got this at the Web Intersect server online so we know it's working. I just proved it. And uh, let's go to here we go. Let's check this out. Let's minimize this a little. Here's the script. It's called myloopfeed.php. Okay. Now what we do is first we claim a uh, a condition. We set a condition to see. Here's where you can do all your security right here. And I just added a really simple one, just uh, to show you where you'd run security. So you say if right there, and the if closes itself down at the very bottom so if this doesn't meet your condition none of this code will execute okay now inside if these conditions meet and everything's good everything's secure then you uh, well from flash I'm sending the variable of requester and its value is Adam that's why I have that set you'll see when I show you in flash in a second you'll see what I'm talking about there now the first thing we do if all the conditions are good, we connect to the database. Now I use an include file to connect to my database, which makes things a little easier. But if you did not, you just put your connection data right here. And if you don't know how to connect to a MySQL database, that's a whole different lesson that you should have taken before this one. So and this is where you put your MySQL connection data. If you use an include file like I do, just pop it in right there. Then we start the the body variable we initialize it then we run the MySQL query on our my members database and I can show you all the names of my database because it's been on video like 30 times now so I'm not worried about it and everything's backed up at my site normally you wouldn't show anybody your queries and give them insight into what your field names and database stuff is you know what I mean uh, but I'm not worried about it. SQL statement is MySQL query select ID selecting first name or selecting sign up date from the my members table where 
email equals or email activated is one I want to make sure it's an activated member before I display them and if you didn't need this where clause in there you just take it out and if you didn't want to order things specifically you just take order by ID ascending out now for the forum member David's request he doesn't really need a limit of 10 because he was asking to bring all 10 out and he only has 10 so he really wouldn't even need this limit 10 but let's say you had a hundred items in there and you only wanted 10 then you use limit 10 within the query as well so this is just limiting to 10 this is ordering them by ascending by ID if you wanted it to go the other way backwards you go descending and that would show the newest to oldest but I'm showing oldest to newest and then email this is the where clause if you needed any clauses in there it's really not necessary um, but you can build your own query however you need your query to be then you run a while loop on the query and inside of the while loop that's when all the result sets come out pouring out into your body variable so right here we gather the ID into a local PHP variable here the row first name same thing local variable here the row sign up date same thing local variable there and I just took the sign up date and made it to where it's a more human readable format using string to time and string f time together they're PHP functions that you can research at php.net and I use them combined together there which I think they show an example on that page at php.net of how to take your uh, time and format it correctly for human reading and then we pack it all into the body variable here and you see we're using the dot in front of the equal sign so that means it's going to compound each one in the loop each 10 that's coming out of the database it's going to compound it into this body variable so it's almost like this body variable is a big container and all of these result sets are getting thrown into it so then we can format it using HTML because in flash our uh, text component is sitting there and it's set to render as HTML in the script so we can use any kind of HTML tags we want most of them anyway and here's how I make the link I just say profile.php and use a variable of the ID on the URL so it's, it's got URL encoded variables that it will it will recognize in flash too when they click it it'll go to that members page and then target self you can target blank if you want it to be a pop-up and then uh, there's the first name variable fed into the line there's the ID variable fed into the line and there's the sign update fed into the line and then I put two break tags just so they're not all jumbled up on top of each other so after the while loop we just echo the variable or a naming instance name or an instance of return body and that's going to be a variable that flash is going to pick up and it's holding the entire body variable that we cre that we created here that big container so flash is looking for something called return body so in the flash script we script that out and then we just close the MySQL database connection and then we exit this PHP script since everything is back in flash at this line right here okay now let's take a look at the flash end of things and we're done okay so here we are in flash CS3 you could be working in flash CS4 just the same and first thing to note is that you can run this code it doesn't have to be in the scene one first frame first thing right away in your movie it can be nested way way down deep inside of movie clips where it happens only if the person happens to click on a certain button on your site or something like that you can make it to where this code would execute any time you want so if I move this whole thing over to frame 50 this code won't execute until it gets to frame 50 and then it'll load it into the text field so you see what I mean uh, but when you let's take a look at the code Let's just talk about that really quick. So in my example, I just have it on the main scene, layer one, text area component that I took from the components library here, text area, drag, I drug it to stage, dragged it out to stage, whatever the word is. I dragged it out to stage, and then 
I gave it a variable, uh, an instance name, sorry, of output underscore txt. Now, with it having that instance name, now we can connect to this text area through the code. And this is just a label I put up here for showing what the application is. And that's all that's on stage. And now let's look at the script. Okay, so everything that requests that data and builds the variable container holders and everything is inside of a function. This function is called request data. Function request data opens right here and it closes right here on line 24. Sorry, on line 30. This function is also inside, so let's move that in a little bit. Er. There we go. There. So this there's a function inside of this other function. Request data function has another function inside of it called complete handler. So I moved everything up a little bit so that way it stays visually separated. And the request data function closes on line 30. So on line 31, there's simply you call the function to run. And this can be called anywhere. As long as your function is set up and available, you can run it anywhere. And this is how you execute this entire function. So I just put the function up and I made it execute directly after. Okay, so now inside of the function we claim the a an instance, a new instance of URL variables. That way we can send variables uh to the script. And then we send we create a new URL request instance right here named var send. So the variable's name is the the uh, variables instance, the URL variables instance is named variables, and the URL request instance is named var send, and that's where you put your path and your file that's going to be picking up all this data from MySQL and PHP. Then we have a URL request method, and that's going to be placed onto the var send URL request, and the method is post. You can use get and any method you need and then we also put the data of the variables the URL variables into the var send that way it sends the variables to that script now on line 10 we say we create a new URL loader instance we name it var loader and that's what's going to bring that all that data in from the PHP file so in the var loader we assign a property of data format is equal to URL data format dot variables. That way you could send a whole big giant list of variables if you need it, but in our case here we're just sending in one one variable that is a big container that holds many, many things. Okay? So here we also add another property to the var loader instance of add event listener up oh, I'm sorry it's not a property here we add an event listener for the complete event when this data is loaded in so when all of the data is loaded in from the PHP and MySQL file complete handler function runs right here function complete handler and that was that little function inside of the main function that I was talking about so function complete handler runs and it it, you you can do an if and else statement here like I've done to say if the target data return body remember in the PHP script return body right here return body equals body all of that data so in the flash file you can say if return body equals nothing if it's empty just put in the output text no data coming through else you have we have a value in our return body so we output we uh output in the text which is set to HTML rendering equals event dot target dot data return body. Just put all that data right into the text field. This could be a dynamic text field, 
or it could be the component like I'm using here. I like the component because it gives you an auto scroller if you have a lot of data. Um, and you also want to condense the white space within that field set to true, okay? And that's pretty much it. So down here at the bottom, in before all of these functions can even run, line 28 is really where it shoots it out. The request flash shoots out the request to load and send all this data back and forth right here in line 28. So the var loader gets the property or the method of load and then you add var send variables and all that stuff to it. That's how that works. That's the best I can explain it. I'm sorry if it's not clear enough. Uh, and right before we did that you can send multiple variables to that PHP file. See variables.requester equals Adam. I could put another one in there. That's variables.poopoo equals smelly. And then in my PHP script, I, I can access it just like I'm accessing requester equals Adam. I could put poopoo if poopoo equals smelly. You know, whatever you want to do. But this is not the the easiest thing to wrap your head around, and you have to have some programming knowledge before you want to tackle something like this, at least a little bit. But I think uh, that's really the best explanation verbally that you'll get from anybody. Maybe somebody else can do it better on paper. But yeah, that's really how it all works. And I'm going to have this file free available so you can expect, inspect it maybe up at the site by tomorrow sometime or something. Okay, we'll see you next lesson.